So myself Ashanil Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Renal Dialysis Technology at Anapoya School of Allied Health Science, Anapoya Dean to be University. So today I'm going to discuss about dialysis. So dialysis is a treatment which is used in kidney failure patients to remove excess fluid and toxins from their blood. So we'll begin the section with specific learning objective. At the end of the section, audience will be able to define dialysis, differentiate between hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis, describe the type of vascular access, discuss the modalities of peritoneal dialysis, describe the various complications of hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. So before going to dialysis, we will see what is renal replacement therapy. So renal replacement therapy is a therapy that replaces the normal blood filtering functions of the kidney. It is used when the kidneys are not functioning well. That is in conditions like acute kidney injury and chronic kidney diseases. So acute kidney injury means it is reversible loss of kidney function whereas chronic kidney disease means it is irreversible loss of kidney function. So coming to modalities of renal replacement therapy that is types of renal replacement therapy. First one is hemodialysis where we will use an uh, extracorporeal circuit or machine and also we will use a dialyzer it is also called as artificial kidney where the filtration occurs inside the dialyzer and next one is peritoneal dialysis where it is also a therapy where peritoneum it is actually a thin membrane lining the abdominal cavity as a filter to remove the excess fluid and uh, toxins from the patient blood and we have renal transplantation it is a surgical procedure to replace the damaged or diseased kidney with a healthy one from a donor so coming to dialysis so dialysis is a procedure to remove waste product and excess fluid from the blood when the kidney stop working properly. It often involves diverting blood to a machine to be cleaned. People who have kidney failure or end stage renal disease may need dialysis. Injuries and conditions like hypertension, diabetics and lupus can damage kidneys leading to kidney diseases. So hypertension and diabetics are the major causes for kidney failure. Every day kidney filter about 1800 liters of blood and excrete the filtered waste products and toxins through urine. It takes just 5 minutes for all the blood in our body to pass through the kidneys and every day this happens about 300 times. If the kidneys are not functioning properly, the waste will start accumulating in the blood that can lead to various other abnormalities. So basically dialysis will remove waste and fluid from the patient blood and it do not correct the endocrine functions of the kidney. Hence dialysis is not a cure for kidney failure. It is just a treatment for kidney failure patients. So coming to the types of dialysis, we have two types that is hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. In hemodialysis, we will use an extracorporeal circuit or a machine and also we require dialyzer. It is also called as artificial kidney where the filtration occur inside the dialyzer. And we have peritoneal dialysis that is we will use peritoneum that is a thin membrane lining the abdominal cavity as a filter to remove the excess fluid and waste products from the patient blood. So coming to hemodialysis. So dialysis is a treatment used for kidney failure patients where hemodialysis uses a machine and an artificial kidney to filter the waste items from the blood and the clean blood is returned to the patient body. So we will take the patient blood and we will return back the cleaned blood to the patient body. It is a method used to clean the blood of people whose kidneys are not functioning properly. So how long does hemodialysis take? Usually it is done three times a week 
and each treatment lasts 2 to 4 hours. So during treatment patient can read, write, sleep, talk or watch TV. So coming to the vascular axis of HD. So a hemodialysis axis or vascular axis is a way to reach the blood for hemodialysis and the axis allows blood to travel through soft tubes to the dialysis machine where it is cleaned as it passes through a special filter called as dialyzer. So why we are using vascular axis because if I prick a normal vein it will get ruptured easily that's why we are using vascular axis. So vascular axis is just a way to reach the blood for hemodialysis. So coming to the type of vascular axis mainly we have three types. First one is central venous catheter oral CVC. Second one is arteriovenous fistula that is AV fistula. Third one is arteriovenous graft that is AVG. So first one central venous catheter. So CVC which is flexible long plastic Y shaped tube that is threaded through the skin into a central vein in neck, chest or groin and a CVC is not usually intended to be a permanent type of axis in case of immediate or emergency dialysis or cannot receive or do not have an AVF fistula or graft we will require a CVC that is central venous catheter. So in the emergency cases or immediate cases we will use central venous catheters. We will we can place that catheter in neck, chest or groin. So coming to the advantages of central venous catheters, it is very quick to place and remove, may be used immediately for dialysis. Central venous catheter placement is an outpatient procedure. So hospitalization is also not required for central venous catheter procedure. Coming to the disadvantages, may damage central veins, bathing and swimming not recommended. Complications can include infection and catheter clotting. So next one, arteriovenous fistula. So arteriovenous fistula is the best way to receive dialysis because it's a long term solution for dialysis patients and carries a low risk of infection. So it is an actual surgical connection made between an artery and vein. So in this figure you can see the connection between the artery and the vein. So an AVF fistula is most often created in a non-dominate arm but sometimes it can be created in our leg. The axis results is an increased blood flow rate through the vein which helps enlarge and strengthen the vein. We will see the advantages of arteriovenous fistula can function for years, not as likely as a catheter to become infected, not as likely to clot. Coming to the disadvantages, may require another temporary type of vascular axis during the healing and maturation phase because it will take one month to get matured. And maturation may be delayed or it may fail to mature. Needles are required to access AV fistula for hemodialysis. So last one is arteriovenous graft. The third type of axis called as AV graft functions similarly to an AV fistula. AV graft placement is also a surgical procedure but instead of connecting the artery directly to the vein, one end of a small hollow synthetic tube will be connected to your vein and the other end will be connected to your artery. So here you can see basically we will insert a foreign material that is polytetrafluoroethylene to the patient arm. So coming to the advantages of arteriovenous graft, it is ready for use in days to 3 to 4 weeks, easy to implant, placement is an outpatient procedure. Coming to the disadvantages, it doesn't last as long as AV fistula, needles still require to access the graft prone to clotting. So second one uh, is peritoneal dialysis. So peritoneal dialysis is the procedure during which the peritoneal cavity act as a reservoir for the dialysate and peritoneum serves as a semi-permeable membrane across which excess body fluid and solutes including toxins are removed and peritoneal membrane is in contact with the rich blood supply to the abdomen organs and dialysate is infused into the peritoneal cavity via catheter. So peritoneal dialysis means basically we will use patient's peritoneal cavity 
as a dialyzer where the filtration occurs inside the peritoneal cavity. So coming to the peritoneal dialysis procedure, mainly we have three phases. First one is inflow where we will infuse the dialysis solution to the patient peritoneal cavity via catheter. So second one is del phase where the, we will keep all the wanted substances and we will remove all the unwanted substances from the patient body. And third one is outflow. Outflow means we will drain all the toxins and the excess fluid from the patient body. So coming to the modalities of peritoneal dialysis, mainly we have two types that is continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis and second one is automated peritoneal dialysis. So these are the major two types of peritoneal dialysis. So under automated peritoneal dialysis, we have nocturnal intermittent peritoneal dialysis, continuous cycle peritoneal dialysis, automated peritoneal dialysis with evening dwell day, automated peritoneal dialysis with morning dwell day and tidal PD. Now we will see the comparison of both that is hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. So hemo means blood and dialysis meaning to pass through it. So basically it will remove all the nitrogenous waste products, excess fluid and electrolyte from the blood by means of an artificial kidney. So this artificial kidney or else dialyzer will do all the filtration and it will remove all the excess fluid and nitrogenous waste products from the patient blood. Nearly 90% of of dialysis patient receives hemodialysis. So coming to the peritoneal dialysis, it removes nitrogenous waste products, excess fluid and electrolyte from the body by means of peritoneal membrane and approximately 10 to 15 patients are receiving peritoneal dialysis. So most of the patients are receiving hemodialysis. Now we will see the complications of hemodialysis, hypertension, muscle cramps, clot formation, hepatitis, dialysis, disequilibrium syndrome. So these are the major complications of hemodialysis. Now we will see the complications of peritoneal dialysis that is exit site infection, peritoneitis, abdominal pain, hernia, protein loss, acolysis and pneumonia. So these are the major common complications of peritoneal dialysis. Now we will discuss the care that should be taken before undergoing hemodialysis. Inform consent, explanation, ask the patient to avoid, check weight, vitals at the beginning and at least th every 30 minutes. Check for cannula and fistula for patency and palpate for the thrill and brood. Withhold antihypertensive drugs on the day of hemodialysis. Care during dialysis, regular observation of complications, check and record vitals every 15 minutes, serve food as patient interest. Each treatment lasts for 2 to 4 hours, so during treatment patient is allowed to read, write, sleep, talk or watch TV. Inform doctor if any complication occurs. Care after dialysis, check and record vital signs. Wait after HD and total ultrafiltration, record the condition of the patient, medications are ordered, explain about the care necessary after HD, inform the family and patient of date for the nurse dialysis, send the patient home or what. Now we will see the summary. So dialysis is the process of removing excess water, solutes and toxins from the blood in people whose kidneys can lo no longer perform these functions naturally. So this is referred to as therapy. So dialysis is used in patients with rapidly developing loss of kidney function called acute kidney injury or slowly worsening condition kidney function called chronic kidney disease. These are the references. Thank you.